Okay, hi there, and welcome to the first of two videos uh, covering environmental market failure. Understanding the specific causes of environmental failure is crucial to scoring high marks in exams. This is the first video in two that looks at some of the major causes of market failure. And in the second video, uh, which follows on from this, we analyze and evaluate options for intervention, whilst all the time providing some topical examples from around the world. A reminder, first of all, of what market failure is. One of the best definitions is that market failure is when the price mechanism fails to deliver an efficient or equitable allocation of scarce resources. This can often happen, for example, when the price of something, a good or a service, does not equal the marginal social cost of production. If we take, for example, externalities, if the market does not price externalities correctly, then there'll be a deadweight loss of social welfare. And crucially, market failure can also have severe, significant distributional effects, distributional consequences, particularly for low-income families and also relatively poor communities uh, in developed and developing countries around the world, many of whom are actually most exposed to the risks and the consequences of climate change. There are many, many examples, potentially, of environmental market failure that you could be asked to analyse and both evaluate. And we'll look at some examples and some data in a second. But think about uh, topics such as deforestation, industrial fishing, the impact of plastic pollution, air pollution in our towns and cities, the threats to biodiversity, the economics of illegal poaching, pollution from farming, emissions from vehicles, and the very topical one at the moment, highly topical, the economics, the environmental effects of fast fashion. Lord Stern, Nick Stern, has called climate change the greatest market failure the world has ever seen. And uh, there are lots of examples of, of this. The deforestation in Brazil, approximately nearly 8,000 square kilometres, uh, 3,000 square miles of rainforest destroyed. Effectively, in just that's Brazil, that's an area in 2018 that's roughly five times the size of London. When it comes to overfishing, um, every year uh, the European Union agree on a, on a total allowable catch, but um, there are lots of uh, companies, countries in particular that are exceeding their fishing quotas, oftentimes by 15-20%, in this case Sweden, well above the, accept the accepted or total allowable catch. So overfishing uh, is a huge issue. Ocean pollution, of course, this is perhaps one of the biggest, most pressing issues of the age. Uh, countries polluting the oceans. China obviously has the highest in terms of mismanaged plastic waste. Indonesia second. But many, many countries uh, um, uh, are affected by this. Big differences globally in terms of per capita emissions. And of course, this raises important intergener intergenerational equity issues. Uh, how, you know, to what extent are we going to allow countries to catch up in terms of per capita incomes? Uh, because as um, they, they need to develop and grow and develop more capability but there are consequences for per capita emissions going forward, of course. Coal plants under construction. Again, China leads the way in terms of most coal plants under construction. Um, China is already the biggest emitter of CO2 in the world. In the United States, actually, there are no, as far as I know, no active new coal power, power plants under construction at the moment. But China and India and Indonesia uh, well ahead of the rest of the world. Huge issues, huge issues to do with the, the economics and the social consequences of air pollution. This gra graphic shows traffic fumes leading to childhood asthma. Um, the incidence is huge in certain countries, particularly in the Middle East. According to a World Health Organization report last year, ambient and household air pollution combined caused 7 million deaths. That's one in eight deaths, including over half a million children. 93% of uh, children under the age of five live in areas where the World Health Authority air quality guidelines are exceeded. And it's, it's, it's not just about premature death, it's about many other externalities as well. Air pollution can contribute to dementia and stunted brain development among the young. And of course, we're now getting more and more data, more and more uh, important data and research on the impact of air pollution, air pollution on human health. Um, if current particulate pollution levels persist, today's global population will lose a total of 12.8 billion years of life. 
and this chart shows the average life expectancy lost per person worldwide due to particulate pollution now ahead of smoking the world health organization calls this the silent killer well ahead of alcohol and drug use and other other issues then we have the issue of or the topic of the threats to biodiversity new report coming out recently saying a quarter of all species are threatened with extinction uh, huge issues, of course, now to do with the emissions from food consumption, the growth of uh, vegetarianism and veganism, and, and, and the increased pressure, for example, on public policy to address the greenhouse emissions from beef and uh, sheep and goat production. So those are some examples. And no doubt, if you get a data response question on this, there will be some lovely data that you can draw from the extracts and from the charts and the tables to get those application marks. But you'll also need some analysis marks, of course. So you're probably looking at using an extra analysis diagram. This slide hopefully refreshes your memory and it shows negative externalities from production. So pollution from factories, for example, air pollution emissions more generally. Crucial thing, I think, in the exam is to be really clear about what the industry is. Is this car production? Is it farming? Is it cement production? Is it, uh, is it plastics, for example? With a negative externality in production, the marginal social cost lies above the marginal private cost, leading to overproduction and a loss of social welfare. And it's important in the exam to get those top analysis marks to show the, um, the deadweight loss of welfare, which is shown here in the green area. I would prefer to label rather than shade, but as long as it's clear, it's up to you. Of course, there are negative externalities from consumption as well, uh, from Vehicle use, from household waste, from noise pollution, litter, uh, traffic congestion, and many other things. Indeed, uh, one of the issues here is, is what happens to the waste that we create. Many advanced rich nations, many developed countries, they export their post-consumer plastic waste, which makes up actually over one-tenth of what we throw out. So typically, the waste that we generate, which we throw out, is then exported, and we're passing on the problem, essentially, to typically poorer countries to deal with. China, of course, recently has, has introduced a ban on the, on the importation of plastic waste, which has a big effect on uh, recycling rates. With negative externalities from consumption, uh, you don't, you've got a choice of diagrams, obviously. Uh, with this one, I'm assuming there's a negative impact on benefits of third parties. So the marginal social benefit lies below the marginal private benefit. But again, the, the implication is clear that in the absence of an intervention policy, then there is a deadweight loss of social welfare. Again, in the exam, if you get a question on plastic consumption or food waste, make sure the axes are contextualised. Quantity consumed of X, for example, make that clear. So what are the root causes? What are the main fundamental causes of environmental market failure? I just want to pick out four or five for you in this uh, little slide. First of all, a lot of, a lot of market failure is, is the failure of institutions, the failure of government, the failure of legal systems to protect property rights, especially uh, common pool resources such as forestry and fish stocks and grazing land, for example. Second failure is the failure to price the externalities from both production and consumption. And there was a failure of the free market mechanism to internalise the externalities. But often market failure is also the result of information failures that, that run deep, really deep information failures. I'm certainly guilty of it myself. Information failures for producers and consumers about the consequences of their actions. A market failure can also come if there's insufficient market incentives. Maybe the market isn't providing the sufficient incentives to truly reward innovation in clean energy. There could be some financial market failures to provide the funding for clean energy which could help to decarbonise production. Decarbonisation is essentially, the word I would use is decoupling, breaking the link, decoupling the link between growth of GDP and the impact on the environment. Fundamentally, this is really a public goods problem. Market failure on the environment is a public goods problem. The natural environment, the natural capital that we have is essentially a public good. When we lose it, it's a public bad and there's always a risk, a danger of over-extraction and of natural capital, resource depletion and degradation, which of course we call the tragedy of the commons. So there we go. That was a look at some of the causes of market failure and some examples to be aware of and some analysis diagrams. In our second video, we'll focus on interventions 
to address environmental market failures. And we'll build some examples and also some key uh, A-star evaluation.